Hey guys, I'm Angela and welcome back to Hobby Night. Today I'm painting a big boy, a Chaos Knight Desecrator for your entertainment. I have been sitting on this Chaos Knight box for quite some time, basically ever since it came out. And this week I want to paint up something big and chonky and armored. And this is the largest thing that I have that I can paint from Warhammer 40K that fits that requirement. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. However, I have a specific goal in mind, two specific goals actually in mind. The first one is I just wanna get this guy table ready today. So that's going to be our main focus. But the other focus is about the color scheme and the narrative behind this particular knight. Because you see, I already have an Imperial Knight force and I want to add to that and I'm going to make this Chaos Knight fit that same aesthetic. Make it look like he is in the process of falling to chaos, corrupted by maybe the Death Guard that my knights are standing up against next to. And I think it's going to be fun. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this model primed up and head to the hobby desk to get painting on this project. As with any project, we're gonna start with the priming process, but I'm going to do two different steps for this priming process. The first one is getting it primed up in just gray sear, using a brush if I miss anything, if I feel like I need to. Then after that, we're going to come back in with a dry brush using a matte white from the Army Painter, using this on all of the pieces that we've painted so far, making sure to move our brush in the same direction across all of the pieces. I went from up and down to get a consistent look. The reason I wanna do this is I really wanna enhance what my contrast paint already does by giving a more natural highlight and shadow already there before we even put paint down. After that, it's time to actually get to putting some color onto this model. And the first color we're going to be using is Rattlin Grime. I decided because this guy is supposed to be falling to chaos, instead of using Basilicanum Gray like I had done previously on my Imperial Knights, I was going to use Rattlin Grime, which is a little bit dirtier looking. And I have to say, I'm very pleased with this look. I'm putting this on the majority of the model. It's going on his legs, the underside of the chassis, a lot of the weapons. Really the only thing that's not getting this color are going to be the armor panels that go on his shoulders and his his legs. Otherwise, this is going everywhere. I have concluded with all of the graining of this model, which honestly is probably 80% of it because the under chassis, the legs, all of that needed to be gray. And I'm very happy with the effect that I've gotten with the rattling grime. It's a little bit darker, a little bit more chaos than what I did on my Imperial Knights previously. So it'll still fit with the vibe, but feel a little bit different and make him stand out a little bit differently, which I am super hyped for. So now I need to do maybe a little bit of cleanup on a couple of the armor pieces and we can start playing with some color. Now I want to go ahead and move on to the armor, and I'm going to have this match what I'm doing on my Imperial Knights, which has a little bit of a Flesh Terrors color scheme with red, black, and yellow. But we're going to be changing that up just a smidge here, mostly on where we're putting these colors. So let's go ahead and start on our Knight and work with Black Templar first. This is gonna go on half of all of the panels that go on the shoulders and the legs, as well as the majority of the torso. On my previous Knights, I made their torsos all red. This time I went with black to make it look like he's falling to chaos. After we're done with the Black Templar, and I do take two coatings of this to make sure I get an even consistency between all of the pieces, it's time to move on to Flesh Terror's Red. This is one of my all-time favorite red color tones, and this instance is no exception. I love what this does on the armor. We're going to be doing this on the other half of all those armor pieces we just painted, focusing some of this on the chest and face area of the torso, as well as putting this a little bit more onto the weapons, especially that gun arm. Once the red is done, we need to turn our focus to the trim. And for this, I am still going to be going with a gold, but I'm going to be using my new favorite yellow, Iron Jaws Yellow, instead of Iyandan, which I used previously on my Imperial Knights. Again, this is a subtle difference, but I do feel like it makes him look a little bit more chaosy. This takes a little bit of time. I want to be careful while applying this yellow down because I really don't want it to overspill onto the red or black too much because it could dry and get some weird, interesting colors that I don't want on the model. So I do take my time on this. Once it's done, however, I want to come back in with a Reichland's Flesh Shade Wash over top all of the yellow, as well as the red that I've already painted. This is going to, one, help unify them, make them look a little bit grittier and dirtier, and also make the yellow look a little less yellow and more gold, which is exactly what I'm wanting. Hey 
Hey guys, I just wanted to jump in and let you know that I've recently started live streaming. So if you never want to miss those, or if you've been enjoying the content you're watching today, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications. Now let's go ahead and jump back to the video. Now it's time to work on the details. I'm really happy with where the armor is at, but we have some cables to take care of, as well as all those spikes and skulls that are on him. So let's work on the cables first. For this, I wanted something that was going to complement both the red and yellow I'd used previously. And I looked at my Imperial Knight and I used Warp Lightning Green on that. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. There's going to be a lot less of the green on this model than I do my Imperial Knights because I do like to use that color tone for my Imperial faction for some reason, even though it is kind of a chaosy color being, you know, warp lightning green and that sort of scaveny. However, we're going to minimize what we use it on here and it's just going on the cables. Once I'm happy with that placement, we're gonna come back in and we're going to tackle all those spikes, the skulls, and of course his decaying face. And for this, I decided to go with Mortarian Grime. And this is really where I feel like the Death Guard influence on this model is coming from because I just imagined this knight faction as they stand upstairs on my shelves next to my Death Guard forces that maybe they're getting a little bit stinky. And we're going to be using Mortarian Grime to sort of mimic that. I'm gonna put this on all the spikes, like I said, the skulls and his face. And this takes a couple of layers because Mortarian Grime is incredibly thin and pale. So I think I end up using three to four layers on the face alone. And on the spikes, I even go so far as to five or six, really to darken that color tone and make that greenish tint shine through. I'm absolutely loving the way he's looking. And at this point, he's pretty table ready. Well, 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 what do we have here? A me correcting an error. You see, I accidentally painted the back of this gun gray, which is incorrect because if you look right here at my existing knight, we've actually painted those in gold. So I am repriming it using a bit of grace here. I'm going to re-dry brush it with a bit of white, and then I'm going to apply my yellow paint right over top of that and make some corrections to make it match a little bit more. I'm also going to do a little bit of extra detail work on the other gun as well, because I also feel like it's lacking a bit of color. So on the chain, I guess it's not a gun, it's a chainsaw. Yeah, 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 you know, close enough. Close enough. It's his other weapon. So I'm going to make this little box here. I'm going to paint it black. I'm going to put a little bit of red on these tanks. And I might do something with these panels here. I haven't fully decided, but I think this also needs a bit more color. So we're going to work on that next. I would consider this knight ready to be assembled and table ready for battle. However, you might notice that he's still in pieces on my tabletop. And the reason for that is because I actually want to take this guy a little bit further, but we're gonna do that in a future episode. I want to actually weather this model, add a bit of blood to that chain sword, which I think will be very cool looking and continue to work on some of the details, pulling out a bit more on the chest that I did not already pull out. I think this is going to end up making him look really cool and it's going to push my skills even further, which weathering is not something I've played around much with. I got some weathering powders from Tamiya. I may even get some streaking grime. I haven't fully decided, but this is a new realm of the hobby that I am very excited to jump into. So I hope you are looking forward to that. In the meantime, I do wanna go ahead and wrap this episode up by thanking my patrons. Without your guys' support, we would not be doing this. So thank you very much for everything that you do for us. I have been Angela, and I hope you have a wonderful hobby night.